the National <laughs> Labor Relations Board, uh, has gotten a lot of attention lately. Uh, and for, for reasons I don't think are, are too helpful to the cause, um, obviously being from South Carolina, their decision to entertain a complaint against the, the Boeing company for moving the South Carolina complaint filed by the Machinist Union that took that sat on the desk for a year, then finally was uh, brought forward by the uh, NLRB to uh, potentially close down the South Carolina site and move the facility back to Washington. Thank God that is behind us now. But at the end of the day, this organization, the National Labor Relations Board, seems to be hell-bent on changing processes across the board, uh, more for a political reason than a substantive reason. What brings us here today is the uh, rulemaking proposal to change the, uh, the time uh, for union elections uh, for employees to vote on whether or not they want to be part of a union. It does away with the pre-election uh, consultation, the, the idea of the employer and the, uh, the union setting, uh, the, the people who want to represent the employees setting down and seeing if they can work out uh, a proposal or a compromise. It shortens the uh, election time to as little as 10 days, so if you're in the the, the company in question, uh, you have a 10-day period before the election. Uh, the, the current mean average is 38 days, so I would argue this is uh, being done not to make things more efficient, but to change outcomes. And really, quite frankly, the outcome being desired here is to make uh, the union position stronger, uh, not to make the system more efficient. And that's what happens. I expect... Uh, a Republican president to nominate people to the board like the NLRB with a business background. I expect a Democratic president to nominate people to the NLRB and light boards with a maybe a, a, a more union background, but I expect the board not to take the agency and turn it into a political organization and try to create by rulemaking what you can't create by legislating. And that's what brings us here today. Uh, the, the whole complaint filed by the uh, Machinist Union in Washington, taking that complaint up that the move to South Carolina was somehow in retaliation against the Union in Washington when no one lost their job in the state of Washington, no one's pay was reduced, I think was, was taking the NLRB into an area that has never gone before. And this is just a continuation of that pattern, and this is not good because the unelected aspect of our government the NLRB and like agencies have a lot of sway over our economy. At a time when we treat, we're trying to make sure we create jobs in America and make it easier for people to locate their companies here, uh, proposals like this, I think, are undercutting what we need to be doing. And this is an unprecedented move. Uh, this kind of breathtaking change in the rules has only happened, I think, two or three times. And this was uh, proposed... Uh, as Mr. Becker was on the way out. So Congress, under the Administrative Review Act, has an opportunity here to stop this before it's too late. And what, what this is being called on our side is sort of an ambush election. The point we're trying to make is that by changing this rule to a 10-day period, doing away with the pre-election negotiations, basically uh, creates an environment where people are having to cast votes and not really understanding who they're gonna, who's going to be representing them, are the nature of their decision. Why do you want to shorten an election? Why do you want to do away with uh, the ability to negotiate between the employer and people that want to represent the employees? So I don't see that this is addressing a problem that exists. I think this is more motivated by getting an outcome rather than reforming a process. And I hope some of our Democratic colleagues will say this is excessive and unnecessary. If the Congress doesn't stand in the way between the American people and unelected bureaucrats who will. This is your chance as a member of Congress to do something about the unelected side of government that's growing more powerful by the day. You have a chance here to say no to a rule that makes no sense that's gonna skew the playing field and quite frankly, I think represents the worst in special interest politics. Hope you'll take an opportunity to exercise your authority as a member of Congress and say, whoa, time out. We don't need to go down this road. Let's let people understand who they will be, who will be representing them. 
let the people who are going to vote in an election regarding unionization of the workplace to have a, a meaningful uh, understanding of what they're about to vote on. There's no reason to shorten the process to 10 days. Uh, I doubt most of us would like our elections to be shortened to 10 days. So this is not about reforming election process is broken. It's about trying to change the outcome uh, and skew it uh, to the benefit of one side versus the other. And again, the rulemaking here is not necessary. This is a chance for a member of Congress to stand up and say no to the unelected side of government at a time when somebody needs to say no to them. And I just hope and pray that we can get some bipartisan support for this because Senator Enzi has done a very, very good job of trying to explain to the Senate and to our conference as a whole about what awaits the American workforce if this rule is changed, why it's unnecessary, and it really is not about reforming a broken process, it's trying to get an outcome uh, where one side benefits versus the other. And so I just hope my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will look at this as an opportunity for, uh, for Congress to speak out against excessive rulemaking and what I think is an abuse of a process. So with that, I, uh, uh, I will yield and appreciate very much uh, the leadership of Senator Enzi.